so we're gonna start with the rapid fire round the first one is at what age do you want to retire 65 how long does it take you to get ready in the mornings 30 minutes most embarrassing moment of your life pass favorite color blue what time of day are you most inspired morning how many hours of sleep can you survive on eight Fill in the blank, an upcoming telecom trend is mm -hmm. blank. Sustainability. The city in which the best kiss of your life happened. Warsaw. Pick one, Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk. Pass. The biggest mistake of your career. I don't think I have one. How do you relax? Gardening. How many cups of coffee do you drink per day? One. A habit of yours that you hate? Hmm, yes. The most valuable skill you've learned in life? Flexibility. Your favorite Netflix show? Oh, pass. One word description of your leadership style? Inclusive. Top priority in your daily schedule? Unwinding after work. Ideal vacation spot? Somewhere at the seaside. Key factor for maintaining a work-life balance. Flexibility. Memorable career milestone. <sighs> I'll have to pass on that. The last song you've been listening to. Um, Massive Attack, probably. The last film that you saw that had a good impression on you. A good impression, The Marvels. All right, well, that's the end of the rapid fire. Now we move on to the longer questions. And I take it from there. With the Jen Dobri and, and Vitami, we welcome today uh, to this podcast uh, Monika Tenerovic, who is the climate officer for Orange Polska. And uh, I'd just like to start off, start off with, by establishing, uh, I guess, you know, what is Orange Polska? Uh, some people who try to investigate it uh, might, be, might be dissuaded from the fact that the, the main website seems to be in the Polish language. Which of course is understandable, but um, but uh, uh, I, I take it it's, it's a mobile provider, but it, uh, then launched that into an, into an ISP um, service. Yes, uh, Orange Polska is actually the leading Polish telecom, and we work on all segments of the telecom market. So we provide services for individual customers, for businesses, and wholesale services too. And Orange Polska emerged from the former incumbent, so Telekomunikacja Polska, and merged essentially with the mobile operator uh, Orange. That's how it began. Okay, so your, your origin is back to the main uh, state telephone company. I guess it once was a monopoly, but then, uh, then obviously other, other separate competitors came on the scene uh, to compete with you. At its core, yes, and it's changed vastly over the past 20 years. Uh, in what ways? Mm, on the one For hand, competition, of course. Uh, of course, the market changed a lot. We now have uh, four big players on the mobile market and even more on the fixed market. For um, a long time, uh, Orange Polska and one of the competitors were the sole convergent telecoms, so offering both fixed services and uh, mobile services. Um, over the past two or three years, we see two tendencies on the Polish market. First is the one to merge and to consolidate, which leads to uh, more and more competitors heading the convergent way. So a consolidation of the market, uh, maybe, maybe yeah. less, a lesser degree of competition, but surely there's a competition authority uh, within the country and at the EU level that keeping an eye on that? Or? Yes, we are a very heavy, heavily regulated market in Poland. Uh, heavily, heavily regulated, so not, not only for competition, but, uh, but what, for certainly not price setting? Or, or, or what, uh, what do you feel is particularly heavy in the regulation? And there have been some regulation moves over the past years. However, there are still parts of the business where uh, price tables are essentially uh, accepted by the regulatory office. Accepted or imposed? Price, price accepted. Tables? Accepted. Accepted. Okay. Oh, that's very interesting. But uh, of course, what what, uh, what is your particular role as climate officer? What what does that mean? And uh, if if you could uh, provide specific projects or examples of the sort of thing you get involved with, that would be very valuable. Well, first of all, I think that what's absolutely crucial to, to underline is that this is not, well, and by this I mean the, the sustainable transition of a business, this is not a one-person role. 
This is an effort made by the entire organization, by the entire company. So what I do in my work is work with various business lines, support them in their transition towards a more sustainable and more, t more balanced uh, business model in terms of climate impact. Okay, uh, because um, you know, that, that brings up the subject that I'd, li I'd like you to, to address and to be able to beat down. Uh, because some suspicious people might think that, well, well, everyone has a climate officer because they have to, even greenwashing. Uh, surely that's not the case, and you can explain, uh, hopefully or presumably, how there's more, more commitment than, than, than just that on the part of Orange Polska to actually doing something. Okay, so in the case of Orange Polska, uh, our climate strategy dates back to 2021, and we uh, published our climate ambitions in the April of 2021. However, we've been doing much even before that. And it, it, it was scattered and it wasn't named, actually. And uh, ma main efforts came from, from the assumption that efficiency should be the way to go, right? Um, back in 2020, what we did was do a first approach towards uh, calculating uh, our carbon footprint towards uh, checking what are the priority areas for us to tackle at this point here and now. And it turned out that because we are an infrastructural telecom, uh, in scopes one and two, so uh, the emissions coming directly from our operations, the fuels that we burn within our network, the fuels that we burn within our fleet, which is essential if you have a network to maintain, Mm, and the energy that we use to power the network, we have 18,000 points within the infrastructure that need electric energy. Those are the main challenges for us to tackle. Um, in Poland, today, over 70% of electric energy comes from burning fossil fuels. Three years ago, this, this, this share was even higher. So we decided that energy is the first uh, focus for us. And uh, what we did was looking into renewables, essentially. Um, back in 2020, in the spring of 2020, so right when the pandemic hit, actually it was March, March, April, beginning of April, uh, we signed our first power purchase agreement, which uh, allows us to have wind energy directly from this producer. And uh, this was the first uh, corporate power purchase agreement of that type not only in Poland, but also within the orange footprint across Europe. And one of the first ones uh, across Europe, if I'm correct. Um, this was the first step for us, actually. And so we signed the agreement in early 2020. But the first results of this PPA came to fruition only last year, in the fourth quarter of last year, because this is another thing that we strongly believe in, that Sustainability is not an action, it's a process. It's not enough to do A, B, C. Yeah, the thing is to focus on the process, to establish milestones and a monitoring system that will allow you to actually manage what you do. Since 2020, we've signed uh, four more agreements in this formula, so PPAs. Mm, some of them are already active. Some of them are still uh, being actually built because, because that's the situation in Poland, essentially. Renewable power still need to be developed most of the times. Mm. Yeah, I wanted to ask, you, know, you, you said you yeah. signed up with wind. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not aware, but maybe that's just me. What sort of wind installations, if any, in Poland? If you ask me, the, the nearest would be the ones off Denmark, under, under Danish. But there, there are wind, they accept the wind... Uh, Wind uh, mills, even on, on the Polish mainland or offshore? Mainland, mainland. Oh, at this okay. point, mainland. Um, there's a there's a discussion in terms of regulations uh, about uh, offshore wind power so that is still to be developed. It is moving towards the, the, the desired uh, direction, but there's still well, off the northern course in the in the Baltic. They might want to build. So. Yeah, but at this point, it's mainly uh, it's mainly land installations. And uh, actually, this market has been uh, somewhat uh, crippled by some regulations in the midst. So uh, we are still hoping for the regu regulations to change, be loosened, essentially, and allow for more powers for renewables. Right, because so you talked about signing the agreement in 20 and yeah. only it, it only getting going in 21, if yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah, and that's a, bit, a bit of a delay. That was due to that regulation? Uh, no, no, that was due to the investment process. 
Oh, okay, you were signing for something that didn't exist yes. yet. But, um, yes, okay. and uh, the 2020, the first, uh, the first PPA agreement actually uh, meant that two new installations specifically for the needs of Orange Polska will be built. We have a partner that owns those installations, those farms, um, but we're the only ones uh, that benefit from them. And we only saw the results uh, in the last quarter of last year. And together with another uh, another agreement, they made uh, up uh, about 12% of our energy demand. That's when the first part came online, and surely that will grow because it, more is coming. Yeah, actually, uh, in the first half of this year, because we also have this 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 approach of not waiting due to the situation uh, on the Polish uh, renewables market and the fact that we have to wait for those powers to be developed. We also signed an um, in, inter, sort of an interim agreement covering 2023, so this year, and I think December 2022, uh, for bigger volumes that will allow us to fill in the gap while we wait for other projects uh, to be developed. And thanks to that approach, um, in the first half of this year, we have surpassed our ambition set for 2025, which was at least 60% of renewables within the mix of Orange Polska. Uh, in the first half of this year, we were about 70% reliant on renewables within the mix. You talked about not waiting for that the stuff to be built up. What, what does that mean? That, uh, that, that presumes that there was something else that was there present at the time that you grabbed instead so you wouldn't have to wait. Uh, well, that was renewable, presumably, what, to, yeah. out of another country? or No, 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 no. Uh, we only operate across Poland. Okay. And uh, we decided to go for powers that were available at this uh, at this point in time. Renewable. At the spot. Yeah, renewable. Mm. Uh, also wind farms. Yeah, also wind farms. Okay. Um, all of the PPA signed by Orange Polska until uh, the September of this year uh, were wind powers. Um, in September, we have signed our first solar agreement. And this will allow us to balance uh, the, the share of renewables in the mix throughout the year. Much better because in Poland, in the colder months, it's much windier and... Naturally, uh, summer summer means sunny months. You know, you know what's what's your assessment of the comparative progress in Poland mm -hmm. of these two renewable sources, wind wind and sun? Because I mean, you took me by surprise by the wind and even by the the solar, but it just may be that I'm, I haven't uh, been tracking progress there. Both are developing rapidly, and in terms of solar, there's a, a very very vast prosumer move. So essentially, individual people putting photovoltaic installations on their homes, on their, on, their, on their households, or even smaller businesses. Um, because over the past, I think, three years, there has been uh, much uh, incentive financially also from the government and especially local authorities and the EU funds uh, for individual uh, consumers or smaller businesses to go for, 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 for solar, essentially. Yeah? So we've seen a boost on that year over year over the past, I think, two to three years. Mm. Now, what we are strongly dependent on and what is still the main challenge is the quality and the state of the infrastructure. So the basically strategic infrastructure. Yeah, it's not that new. It needs a lot of investment. In the electrical grid, especially. Absolutely, the absolutely. The electrical grid needs needs some specific investment to be able to to essentially manage the energy volumes produced from renewables. So, mainly spikes during the, during the day. Yeah. Right. I, I'd, like, I'd like to get into into partnering because uh, uh, you know reaching out even beyond your sector to partner to further these environmental aims. Uh, I, I presume that the sort of transactions that we've discussed even so far were not so much partnering rather than just sort of purchasing agreements. Although, although indeed uh, it, it must be true that uh, you were probably the, like the foundational customer, the really essential customer that really enabled the wind projects to have the financial. It depends. It depends. It's project by project. It, it actually depends because oh, okay. uh, overall in Poland there is much interest in renewables, and it only accelerated last year in 2022 um, because as essentially a country that's closest to a territory that is in the state of war, so Ukraine and Russia, and very strongly prior to, 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 to the past, let's say, no, still strongly dependent on fossil fuels that are, that have been maybe, okay, that have been uh, imported from the Eastern Europe. There was something missing in that equation. 
which meant that, uh, well, actually, going a step back, um, why we decided on the PPA and why we decided on renewable energy in the first place? Because works began way before the climate strategy. Once again, we're back to efficiency and effectiveness. The decision was made in order to, of course, limit the emissions, but also to provide some stability in terms of energy pricing and, and energy supply, to, div to diversify essentially as a business strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and only those, uh, those uh, first two installations that were active in the last quarter of last year actually provided some savings uh, on the energy budget within the 2020. So 12 months that, uh, well, 10 months that we had a very, very uh, volatile situation in Poland when it comes to energy market and energy prices actually surging. Did what again? Sorry. Surged. Oh, surged, yeah. Yeah, for both businesses and individual customers. And uh, for individual customers, the government did kind of their work and, and froze the prices essentially, which meant that the cost had to go somewhere. And I'm sorry, this is the time frame when the war has started and, mm -hmm. and yeah. so not so much more energy is available from the east from, from traditional mm -hmm. sources and okay. And you know, obviously that hit business as well as uh, as consumers and actually I guess governments uh, will be uh, quicker to to uh, cushion the consumers, the voters rather, rather than the, the, than the, uh, the businesses. Yeah, and the changes on um, the changes on renewables also for consumer offers or business offers are also uh, heavily regulated. And those regulations change a lot. And uh, I speak of our own experience because in Poland, Orange uh, has uh, an energy company called Orange Energy, so Orange uh -huh. Energy. And uh, they provide uh, energy based on guarantees of origin for individual consumers or uh, mid, mid and small businesses. And then they also have a photovoltaic offer and so on and so on and so on. Oh, that's interesting. So you've essentially vertically, vertically integrated you know, incorporated one, one aspect of your input into your very same company. That's that's wholly owned by, by Orange, I presume, or Orange, Orange and Energy, uh, wholly owned uh, subsidiary? Uh, yes. Okay, well, again, so you, you break product in-house to get the energy you want to uh, vertically integrate. So that, that's, uh, that's well, actually, it's a subsidiary that uh, serves uh, our customers. They do some work uh -huh. in terms of solar, for example, for our offices, for us, uh, but both their key uh, focus is is actual energy market for the consumer or for smaller or, or mid-sized businesses. Oh, okay, just, just only only slight wholesale uh, provision to to orange. I wouldn't right? even call it wholesale. It's just business to business relations because what mm -hmm. they do is they, for example, uh, provide solar installations on one of our headquarters. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, and no doubt they they also provide energy to what other business might might need it. It's an energy company that sells energy to consumers and businesses and makes yes. money. Makes money the way the the one condition though it's owned by Orange which insists that it be it be uh, totally renewable. I presume. That's the direction. That's the direction. Well, not That's yet. the direction. Yeah. It's not easy. <laughs> Still in, in Poland, in Poland it, it's, it's not, not it's not easy. However, the uh, the company uh, has a new strategy that was launched uh, earlier this year. And we're talking about or Orange Energy. Orange Energy. Right. Yes. Okay. And what what that what would that strategy be to the extent we're allowed to know? Uh, that strategy entails uh, a shift not only to green energy on paper, so based on guarantees of origin, but actual uh, green energy, so based on power purchase agreements. Oh, in other words, a transition to what everyone expects them to do, get away from the fossil fuels and into, into renewables. Yeah, the, the obvious thing that everybody Yeah, and know. for many years, uh, Orange Energy has been uh, the leading uh, so-called alternative energy provider in mm -hmm. Poland. So okay. that's quite a chunk of our business. Yeah, interesting. And, and again, co-branded, so you, you gain some of the shine, obviously, uh, from the good things that it does, in addition to the good things that uh, Orange Polska itself does. Yes, and actually from a major burden, because we were debating to in, whether to include this type of uh, operations, because it's not core telecom business. It right. differs vastly from what we do day to day. Um, and we discussed on how to include uh, emissions coming from Orange Energy into our climate accounting. The discussion is still ongoing. However, uh, thanks to the efforts made um, by the guys within Orange Energy over the past well, year and a half, let's say, um, from being a burden, they may become an asset. So that's the direction. And, and clearly, Orange Energy, when, when, when asked for customers wanted so, so much energy, rather than saying, no, sorry, we only have so much because it has to be 
renewable, they said, well, we'll give you what you want, even though part of it can't be renewable, but we'll make, we'll do the best we can to, yes. to make the transition. Yes. Okay. Uh, interesting. Well, um, you, um, our, our research uncovered that uh, you, uh, you did serve for the city of Warsaw uh, as a press officer and uh, extensive background in public relations and that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, how, how has that helped you in fashioning the right sort of communication strategies, which might be sort of out of the ordinary to push an extraordinary message of, of climate of climate danger and the things that, that, that society and business need to do to address it effectively? Well, back in the, the public administration, I used to actually work with uh, topics related to environmental protection and economic development. With the city and the city. With the city, okay. yes. Uh -huh which marries essentially what we do at Orange because you know the purpose of every business is to grow. And the question is not whether to do it, but how to do it. And that's the question that we're being asked more and more by our customers, both individual but businesses mainly. Um, and being with Orange for almost a decade, I think that what is the biggest experience that I can build on and that, that I can use is just simple knowledge of the company, knowledge of the business. Knowledge of the telecommunications built. Absolutely. Business. And so maybe you, you needed a little bit of time as merely the the head of media relations to learn on the side those additional stuff and, and to be finally become the climate officer. Of, yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Plus, I have, as mentioned before, I've always worked with those topics and they do interest me uh, personally. So. It all makes sense. Uh, okay, again, with the experience on the climate side, even with the city of Warsaw, mm -hmm. and then that bringing along and then learning more about the, the, the new business that you've been plunging, namely telecoms, rather than a political administration mm -hmm. to de develop your skills, and then finally finally become the uh, legitimate uh, climate officer with both the media background and also from your time in the city and interest and, and skills and knowledge about the climate. One thing that I, th I think is the strongest assumption that I have in both lines of work is to tell the truth and lead by example as a business because at Orange we are a leader in merely business terms so numbers of customers volumes of services and so on and so on we are the ones yeah it is our responsibility to also lead by example in all of the other areas that we have to be taken into consideration and we have to be accountable for and we at Orange we've done many things that are actually well good examples of, of uh, sustainable transition to, in terms of telecoms for example in Poland uh, we don't sell the customer premise equipment so uh, set top boxes or modems to the customer mm -hmm. uh, we lease it yeah we lease those boxes which means that uh, over 90 percent of those boxes can come back to us. And once we collect them from the customers, uh, just outside of Warsaw, we have a refurbishment line. Each, for example, modem, the, the latest model that is handed out to the customers, um, by design, is uh, ready to be refurbished at least seven times. Which means that we don't have to buy six additional modems to give them to the customer, we can use this one. This is the only uh, facility of this type within Orange Group in Europe. Um, and we also work for other countries across the Orange footprint for refurbishment of customer premise equipment. Uh, per year, it's about half a million devices that goes over this refurbish refurbishment line, which is quite but a result, I guess. Don't have to be made out of new. It can, can be reused in a yeah, very efficient and way. And actually, they're just, they're just as good as new. Um, the newer devices are constructed also in a way that allows us to use uh, the casing or use uh, and essentially exchange uh, any internal components that need to be exchanged. Um, we have uh, the core of the device and for example Wi-Fi module can be replaced so we can, ex we can actually um, upgrade the device to give better quality to the customer within the same casing and, and the same the same mainframe, which prevents uh, life cycle emissions from growing. Yes, exactly. Well, that that sounds like one it's one but one example yeah. of a sort of a portfolio of, of best practices for Orange uh, Polska, where where you're you know, you're leading uh, the field among your your fellow telecom comp uh, companies 
Can you name name some others uh, where, where you, uh, you uh, stand out in that sort of, sort of way? Uh, another example, maybe our policy regards refurbished uh, personal devices, so mainly smartphones. Mm -hmm. um, for the past years, we've been active uh, in this realm, mainly through scattered operations. Last year, we gathered uh, them and created a single REAP program, so we use Reduce Recycle, Repair, is, which is also a major factor. Those you just can't give to someone else because they know it's the old kind that they, 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 have, they have to have a different approach for that. Yeah. We're responsible for the devices that we introduce to the market, which means that we, are, we have our ambitions uh, set for how many devices we collect from the market to either recycle the materials that are inside a smartphone because it's to produce one smartphone takes roughly from 40 to 70 kilograms of raw materials which is way more than you'd imagine right mm, and thanks to taking them back either refurbishing and reintroducing to the market which we do we have a refurbished offer mm, or recycling, so using the components that can be used, utilizing safely what else is there that we cannot uh, um, essentially reuse. Um, we try to limit the impact of digital devices, personal devices on the environment. So this is, um, both of those example are, examples are a way of uh, introducing our customers to join us in the path to sustainability and the path to zero emissions. Our global ambition is uh, net zero by 2040. And whose basis on Orange uh, Polska itself being net zero or, or Poland? Or, uh, Orange Polska. Uh, Orange Polska yes. to be to net, be yes. net zero. Uh -huh. and it, it, 2040. Okay. Yes, and it includes all scopes. So uh, the fuels that we burn, the energy that we use, mm -hmm. and also across the value chain, which is a huge challenge that we are now approaching and uh, introducing some solutions, uh, as mentioned, for the customers. Mm, but also uh, a lot of work is done with the vendors, with our suppliers, which is a major part. And as an example of an action that also promotes circularity, um, but more oriented towards specific telecoms uh, operations, and I mean the backhaul operations, um, we also have an internal program within the Orange Group. Within the pan European yes, orange group. Yes, right? yes. Um, that allows us to either resell the network equipment or network components that we don't need, don't use, and that are usable in, our, in the state that allows us to do so, or buy refurbished equipment uh, for the network uh, when it is reasonable. So, this is another example of this life cycle um, approach, but applied to, to our core operations. Apply to even your sort of your, your wholesale network uh, equipment, which again you join in cooperation with your other orange companies. Yeah, to, absolutely. Uh, I mean, this is a big example because you know network equipment makes up a lot of what we do. Um, but uh, we try to try to work with uh, every little aspect. For example, we have uh, agreements with technical schools across the country. There are three or four. What, what, what do they do for, for you? No, we do stuff for you, them. You do for them. Yes. Right? Yes, we provide them with uh, excess uh, fiber, op fiber optic cables and uh -huh. similar components that we don't need anymore, that are not usable. We provide them with uh, fiber optic cables or other network components that we won't be using, that are essentially spare when it comes to our operations. But uh, those, uh, those institutions can hand them to their students. They can learn more practically about the work that they will be doing within the telecom industry. So this is an example of a small action, but but actually very meaningful. Yeah, surely it sounds like it. You know, you, you mentioned how uh, how the wider world in Poland, shall we say, only got onto the renewables bandwagon around in 22. Well, you were already in 20, of course, uh, making your initial uh, agreements. It happened before, but 2022 was certainly a boost. And, and possibly for very cynical and practical reasons in terms of energy supplies being scared, having to find something different, maybe, and why not renewables? Uh. Yeah, but actually what we did even before, starting 2013, I think, was uh, saving the energy that we use. So mm -hmm. energy optimization, essentially, um, with good results, because between 2016 and uh, 2022, the end of 2022, we've saved over one terawatt 
hour. So for reference, that's about the same amount that we, I mean Orange Polska, will use up in 2023 and 2022 combined. So it is quite a result, I think. Okay. And we use various, uh, various measures to do that. For example, run sharing with T-Mobile in Poland. Okay, but the, what I had in mind was in, in the, looking to the future, to what extent there is a, a sustainability movement across all of uh, Poland's telecom industry, yourself and your competitors, mm -hmm. uh, well, to what extent the other ones have also, shall we say, see the light, have uh, taken a look at, at, at Polsko Orange best practices, adapted to, to some degree to their own uh, practices, and uh, getting serious about you know, the, the climate crisis and various, uh, various uh, net zero goals, uh, even on the, on the na nationwide scale, uh, trying to achieve them. It's a, it's a direction that generally Polish businesses go for. Not only telecoms, not only uh, ICT uh, companies. What is specific to the telecom and general in general uh, ICT uh, business? Because as part of our B2B operations, we have an integrator uh, company as well. So it's called Integrated Services and provides uh, loads of wide scope of, of, of ICT services. Mm, what we can do is support other industries in their uh, sustainable transition. We have the means to do it, we have the knowledge to do it, and in the case of Orange Polska, we also have our own experience that we can share, for example, in terms of energy efficiency. Mm, what uh, One example of a solution that is, uh, is very efficient in uh, actually tackling the climate uh, climate issue and for other industries as well is smart metering sensors internet of things solutions smart cities smart metering being able to read meters without a physical person absolutely them, right? absolutely it's an essential component for for companies to for example track their energy use and manage it more efficiently once again we're back to the the efficiency okay. everything that you haven't used is the most uh, climate friendly yeah Okay, but does there exist like an industry association of telecoms mm -hmm. through which you know, through which someone could take the initiative, maybe Orange Polska, to voluntarily spread best practice and, and try to pull everybody collectively into a more sustainable uh, uh, attitude? Yes, we work together with other telecoms, with uh, device suppliers, with vendors within uh, the, the framework of the Polish Chamber for Telecommunications. We have a dedicated climate and environment committee and we are working within that entity on uh, industry standards regarding the climate and environment and fostering awareness, basically, on the issues that we have to face and the challenges that we have to tackle. And this is all presumably, you know, not necessarily so profitable, but of course, if you don't have a country anymore or if there's a climate crisis, uh, you, you don't have much of a business anyway. So out of sort of the pro bono or uh, public uh, service, uh, incentives uh, of Orange Polska? Mm, there's, that's actually a very common, I think, misunderstanding. Uh -huh. okay. Because being more sustainable doesn't mean it's expensive. Mm -hmm. It's like the energy example, right? If you buy conventional energy and then buy origin, uh, guarantees of origin on top of that, yes, it will be more expensive. But if you decide to go for renewables, so essentially the real deal, the price may be better. And this is a simple example to show how um, I think that the uh, global approach is also changing. You mean literally global? Or, yeah, or, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, even back two years ago, when we look back two years ago, um, CFOs were not very keen on sustainability <laughs> because that's the first that came to their mind. Yeah, because there was this sort of old school of thinking about uh, ESG, so environmental social governance yeah. commitments, that they must cost. Yeah, it has to. It has to cost money. Mm -hmm. um, but if you do it the right way, so integrate this sustainable logic within your business operations, you won't have to pay on top. It will be amping up your results and it will be boosting your business, especially in the situation that we have now in Europe where um, sustainable issues, let's call it that way, and ESG is gaining more and more traction. And we're, in the, uh, we're about to uh, enter a new era of non-financial reporting that will be accounted for in the same framework as financial reporting. More and more, business, more and more businesses will be paying more and more attention to sustainable. We'll have to be. Yeah. We'll be okay. required to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely.
because what you do as their supplier, so what we do as their supplier in terms of ICT, will be visible in their reporting, in their track record. This is essentially a business opportunity and not a burden. Exactly, especially since fortunately solar and wind are get, are, have, have broken through a lower barrier and getting cheaper and cheaper and, and making more sense on, on their own terms. Okay, good point. So the last question for you is of a personal kind. What would you be doing in your life if not this? Hmm, that's a very good question. I think I would be running um, a flower shop. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful and sustainable. She, she likes gardening. I like gardening, I do. And it's always kind of, I've, I've always associated this, this line of work with peace and tranquility.